Okay, should be going. Okay. Hi guys, good morning. I just wanted to go over a couple things with host coaching this morning. Um, we actually, uh, when I started, Joellen had this Evernote that she created and I thought it was genius. It goes through a lot of things like the first ABC building blocks of, of everything. Um, and I think it just makes it a little bit easier when you're guiding your host, especially if they're first time hosts, um, on kind of what they need to be doing. If we don't help them to know what they're doing, then it's not gonna be your thousand dollars successful, your successful party. So a couple of the things um, that I wanted to talk about first are within that host packet that we send out to our hosts. And I don't know if you guys have kind of seen, it's been posted on um, our Facebook page, but my girlfriend's house has these baggies. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this. This is kind of what Joellen, um, I know Christy, you use these too, don't you? Yeah, these are wonderful. They're so cheap and you can put in, I usually just put in one to two catalogs. Um, in that packet for my host. I always put in a taste the good life or life tastes great, I guess is what we call it now, um, which looks like this, you guys. You guys probably have seen this in your new consultant kit too. Um, and you can kind of tell, I'll go over this here in a little bit. Pampered Chef actually has a template for you to make your own um, labels, your stickers to put on your magazines and things like this. Um, and so I'll go over that here in a little bit, but I always just make sure and attach to everything that I'm putting in my packet, um, my name, my consultant number, and all of that. Another thing um, that I like to put in, in addition with the Life Tastes Great, is the kit credit coupon that hosts can get when they, when they host a show, they can get either $25 or $50 towards a new kit. Um, so I always try and put that coupon in there, and that's also available on, um, on our Pampered Chef, if you go into the Business Center, you can also find that to print off. Um, another thing that I've recently started doing is um, putting in a wish list for my hosts, just so they can write down as they go through the party kind of what they like. Um, and that kind of helps in the end, maybe speed things up a little bit when the hosts are unsure of what they're wanting. I've been trying to kind of guide them through so that way it doesn't delay submitting a party in the end because the host isn't ready with what they were wanting to. Um, another thing is the fridge reminder sheet. And I just am gonna share my screen here on the fridge reminder, screen, uh, fridge reminder sheet. So that way you guys see. Oops. See. Can you guys see what I'm seeing? It looks here. See if I can pull, I'll pull it up here and see if I can just show. Yeah, For some reason, it's not letting me do drawings. Oh, you have a Google Doc? So basically, you guys, this is loading the fridge reminder sheet. I find it to be really important because it's going to go through a couple things um, with the host. And it's basically just to remind them about over inviting. Like you don't want um, your host to invite, especially at a Facebook party, 200 some people. You really want to encourage them to vote or to send out about free invitations to people um, just so you're not over inviting. Let me see if I can pull up. Here's mine, just a hard copy, Megan. If I mean, okay, I can I post this later to you guys since I'm having a hard time getting it to pop up here. I had it all ready to go last night. So yours is not a, a Word document. Do you have it on Google Drive? I, you know, I do a lot of my stuff on Google Drive now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I just find it a lot easier to share things. See, there's my wish list. I can show that to you guys here a little bit too. Let me get to the fridge. And I can share my fridge um, sheet with you guys later too so that you know kind of what we're talking about. I'm so sorry, you guys. This is not... Oh, here it is. There it is. Yeah, so it looks like... Uh, Okay. 
Gosh, our internet, it, I don't know if it's mine or what's going on, but this is taking forever. Okay, so here is our um, fridge reminder sheet. Um, and I like this one a lot because, like I said, it goes out about, or goes on about how to send out your invitations. Um, you know, when you personally invite 40, you will, you know, even if you've gotten married or no, when you send out your invitations, you're going to think that you're probably going to get 30 to 40, maybe 50% of the guests to come through in the very end. So that's why I always tell 40 will usually equal between 15 and 20. And then it also says just get your 10 outside orders. And I always say kind of 10 to 15 even outside orders if possible, um, 10 minimum. Um, and then it, it talks about your dates, like when you want all those outside orders collected. Um, and that just really kind of guides your host so that way they have a timeline of what you are expecting from the party as well. Um, and just it's a good communication because it'll also talk about when to email email you. So basically, you'll want to know the final count, the theme, any outside orders, directions to their house, if they've had any um, questions on how to kind of get on, log on to their host dashboard. Um, it's going to also talk about um, when we send out ingredients for the party, um, we're going to send them out three to five days before the party. And just basically reminding, reminding, reminding all of your guests, texting on Facebook, emailing them, um, and reminding them when their party is scheduled. Another key piece to this is when you're going to arrive, which is at the bottom here. Um, I always try and arrive 30 to 35 minutes before the party. Um, and really, if you're doing it for the first time, I would even say 45, just because it does take a minute to set up your stations. Um, and then here's this last part is the close by. Um, and that kind of goes with what I was saying with the wish list for the host. I just have been realizing lately that um, having them start a, a wish list does help that close by date that you put on that fridge list for them. So, does anybody have any questions on this? What wish list do you choose? Um, you know what, you guys, let me show you the one. I Mine is pretty generic. Let me just show you really quick what mine is like. Uh, quick and simple. And I think Joellen has given me this idea, too. If it'll open up. There is, I will say, there is um, there is a way the host can actually go on and enter their own order, even. Um, and I ran across, I can show this to you on our team page, um, yeah. this a picture that shows them how to do that. Um, and I don't say that at the very beginning, I said it to them like kind of after their party where they can go and be adding their order into your show. <laughs> it's kind of nice. Yeah. And they can enter payment and everything and it's secure. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'd be nice to see too. I This is just kind of basic. And even at my vendor event that I did this last week, I kind of just handed these out to people um, that were like, well, I have a couple things. It just is nice because you have an item number um, and the product and the page for them to refer to, even if you're wanting to go back and make a wish list on your guys' website. Um, and then this is also the one that I hand out at parties just to the guests. But like I said, it's very, very, very basic. Um, and then at the bottom, I just kind of put, like, what was your favorite products that you saw tonight? Um, and just get a little bit of feedback if you're interested in doing a cooking show, um, if they'd like more information on how to get a $1,000 show, um, and just about the kit credit, getting the kits, um, and then if they're interested in becoming a consultant. So that's just kind of my worksheet that I did. Pretty basic. Does anybody else have any other questions before we move on? Okay. Um, the last piece that's um, also kind of goes hand in hand with the fridge reminder sheet that I always put in. Um, and you guys, when you got your consultant kit, you probably got this as like um, a folder that you could put papers in and things. And there was maybe four folders for 10 bucks or something like that. It's super expensive. I just go to Target and I got cardstock um, and I print on my own version of this party planner. Let me see. Whoop. There it is. So this is actually on our Camber Chef um, Business Center as well. If you just type in, if you search um, the party planner, 
this is a PDF format, um, and it's just front and back. So when I print it, this is front, and then this is the back. Um, and it just kind of goes through um, who to invite, so they have room to write their, their guests down, and then it also talks about like their party checklist. So um, I always make sure and put this in front and center in my little pamphlet. So that way you can kind of remind them what their show URL is to their party date and when to collect outside orders. It's just helpful to keep reminding them when things are due. So that way they kind of are guided as well. Has everybody seen this before? Okay. All right, so basically, too, um, we're just helping them set goals and going over how to get their $1,000 parties and the incentives for the $1,000 show, which is also on the back of our catalogs that we send out. It'll show them uh, kind of what it takes to get the amount of free product that they're going to be earning, how much sales they'll need. Um, so basically, the minute you, you send all of this out, you're coaching the minute you book this party. And this is the best way um, for sending things out to them, I think, is this little packet that I've kind of shown guys. And then also giving them a quick call and just making sure that they don't have any questions and kind of reiterating what you sent to them in this packet. It's kind of how I get my party started. So does anybody else have any questions on this part of it, just the host packets? All right. So we will go on to what um, we do as consultants to get ready for the party. Um, this is a pretty important piece too, because before you can send all of that out, um, you're gonna have to um, set up your website on the consultant's corner, creating a show for your host. So um, you're basically gonna go to the show info, the show page, and you can enter in all of their information. You're gonna want the best contact. And I always make sure, I was listening to this week about um, host coaching on our website. And one of the best things that I heard was, this is a good time to call your host and ask what is the best way that they like to be contacted, just so they can hear your voice and they, they know a little bit more about you and that makes them a little more comfortable with you too. So I always kind of, like to do that sometimes I'm not always the best at it but it is nice to know what's the best email for them what's the best shipping place for them and when is the best time to call them because you're probably going to need to talk to them a couple times before you actually have the show um, just about ingredients or um, just inviting guests or any questions that they might have um, so basically you can also let me see if I can share this screen for you guys you'll be able to email the host after you create their show. Let me. So basically once you create their show, there's different tabs on the top. And the show info page is the one that you'll start on, and that's where you enter in all their contact info. When you scroll down, that's where you're gonna see the tax info, like the sales tax and your food tax info. Um, so once you enter in all that information, you've created your show. The next tab that you would go to would be um, your show page, and that's where you're gonna make the show URL for your guest, or for your guest to go to for your host, their party. Let me just show you this really quick. I'll hop onto one of the parts I just created. So you go to my shows. Um, and so if you're creating a new show, you're just gonna go to the new show. So you'll click that. And I'll take you to Ashley's. So this is your show info page. This is where you're gonna put in, and this is, you guys kinda knew too, um, this virtual party box that you can click. Um, so you, it's, you start here, it's a show type is always a catalog, but they've just recently added this virtual party that you can click, and I think they're just kinda getting feedback on um, if it's social media or Facebook or whatever you're doing. Because when you come down 
to tell us more, then you'll be able to click that it's a virtual party there too. Um, this is where you'll enter in their email and their best contact, the address, and then this will be their the sales tax and the food tax. So you would save that, and the next place you would go would be to the show page. And you can create different themes depending on what you pick for the tell us more. You can pick different themes. Um, you can choose different photos to have on that URL when they click on that link. Um, and then this is where you can kind of create their own. And if I can, I always just try and do the slash go slash whatever their full name is. And I just make it all lowercase. Um, that's kind of been how I've been doing it at least and make it easy for them to remember. So the next thing that I do, this is the guest list where they can enter in their guests if they would like to. Um, I, I kind of have maybe 50-50 that actually do this part of it. Most of the time, the guests enter in their information at the party for me. Um, but this is really nice. If they do, then you can add this all to your contacts too. If they enter in all their guests on here, it's really nice to have them before, I think. So I always encourage it. Um, but this is the email the host. And you can basically send out your emails before and after the party. Now I always try and take out, there's a part um, about sending out invitations. I always take out, there's this body of this text that they put in for you, which is very nice. I always have to add a little bit if it's a Facebook party, just about over inviting on there. But if it's an actual in-home party, a live party, there's a part that says, please send me your guest list with street addresses as soon as you can. And I'll send out official invitations closer to your party. I always delete that. I, I will send them invitations, paper invitations, if they would like that, but I don't send out the invitations formally for them to the guests. If they would like to do that, then I will let them do that. I have invitations that I'll give them. Um, the one thing that I really like to do is I make a red stamp invitation, um, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with red stamp. Have you used red stamp before? Anybody? The, the one that I put on the team page, kind of the reminder of this morning, is the one I use because it's generic, and I just text it to them with the specific information. I know you and Joellen are good at like just updating one for each um, party, but if somebody is not familiar with it and wants to kind of use the idea, they can even use like a generic one. Yeah, I can show you guys really quick. I usually try... Um, I just made one the other night. I can show you really quick kind of what. Okay. So this is um, the card. I just email it to my host and then they can text it or do however they would like with it. Um, but I always say, especially for Facebook parties, um, you know, send this to people that maybe aren't on Facebook or people who have said that they can't come. This is a great way um, to invite them or remind them about what their, their um, URL is, their show pages, and information on how to order, even if they're not able to attend the party. And I, I think this is great. Honestly, Joellen, when she, before I was a consultant, she sent this to me for my first party. And I actually use this probably more than anything else, even versus a Facebook invite. I just emailed this to all of my um, guests indiv individually, and I felt like I kind of had a little bit better um, of a response from people just because they felt like they were getting this individual invitation from me. So this is, if you have time to do this with your parties, I really like this part of it, um, just creating something for them that they can text or email to their, to their guests. Um, and then the last thing, you guys, when I'm setting up these parties is basically I use SendShare, which you, you don't have to do any of, any of that. It's um, something that automatically posts for you. But I create their Facebook party just so that way I can use my SendShare because um, it'll show up as my parties, basically. Does that make sense to everybody? 
You have to be the host of your Facebook party from SenseShare to be able to automatically do posts for them. Um, but even before SenseShare, I was, I was basically um, making them their invitations on Facebook. And then I just make them a co-host is what I have been doing. So then they can just, all they have to do is easy peasy, add your guests. I'll post everything for you. Um, if you want to comment on things or say different wish list items throughout the parties on the week, um, even if it's a live party, I'll encourage them if they've had us create a Facebook post just to say, um, you know, you guys, I'm really excited that you'll be coming. So the more that they post, the more that their guests are going to see because they have posted it. So always just make sure and make the co-host and encourage that 40 guest limit or however. So does anybody have any questions about creating the show? Most of you guys have probably done this a lot already. So, and then the last thing that I was going to talk about is just basically, I, I use paper a lot, you guys. I have to stay organized by writing everything down. And I know some really like to use um, the Google Drive or Evernote, which is great. I still use that too. But I have a notebook that I've made, and it's just basically a three-ring notebook. Um, and it has all of my host coaching stuff in it. So basically my first tab, um, like I'll put my host specials and things into it, but my first tab is host coaching. And the first page that is in it is the host information and checklist. Can you guys see this? You can also find this on the Pampered Chef website. Um, so it's just the host information and checklist. And that's also a way that I can keep track of for the year, even all of the parties that have been hosted, it'll have your show number. Um, it'll have reminders on this sheet about if you've sent a host packet. It'll ask you like when you've sent it, when you've created your show, um, if you set up their web page, what is the page? Um, and then it also just has your first contact date, second contact date, and your third contact date which is really nice when you're making those phone calls to the host. So that way you kind of have a checklist of what you want to go over each time you have a, con a conversation with them. So say like your first contact, um, that one of the first things on the check sh checklist sheet is setting up and confirming your show date and going through the host rewards program because that's the most important part. We are going to try and have this glorious show for them um, and make everything very perfect for them because they're going to be inviting all these people into their home. So we just want to make sure that we're also creating this party into what their thoughts and their ideas are as well and kind of guide them through what we've been doing um, with other parties, giving them suggestions and things like that. Um, say you were going to call them on the second one. Part of, that, uh, part of that checklist is just making sure that they haven't over-invited um, and keep encouraging them about getting their outside orders in, you know, the 10 to 15 number. Um, and then you can start talking about recipes and the type of party um, that they were kind of having in mind. The third contact is usually when I ask them about grocery shopping, if there was any um, questions that they had about the grocery list that I sent out or the recipes that we were making. Um, and then also talk about how many people they think are, they're expecting to their party. That's pretty huge too before you send out the ingredients just so that way you know um, if you really want to make three, three things, or if maybe you should just cut it back to two, if there's going to be less than two people, two different stations. So, um, this is really nice on the back. It'll also kind of talk about, um, keeping track of your expenses. So your mileage, your gas, if you had to help the host, um, with any groceries, any postage that you had to pay to send out that host packet. Um, and then it'll also give you reminders about, have you sent your thank you for her hosting, um, have you scheduled a closing date? Um, and then going over the, the final host rewards for what they get and just guiding them. You can also take this to your parties because it has a section on it where you can add bookings. So if you are checking guests out and they're interested, um, this is also where I go and I just write their name down and their phone number on this sheet. So that way I remember that that person that's hosting that next party was associated with this host. So that way you can kind of keep track of that. Um, so yeah, this is very, I love going through this sheet. Christy, do you still use this? Oh, I think you muted. 
I am going to start using it again because I used it for so long and then I kind of got away from it trying to do like Evernote and then I would, um, I mean, I, I, and if you're good with everything online, then, you know, I had a table, but then it, for me, it was harder to do it online because I wasn't always where I could easily get to my Evernote. And I want, likes to write as I'm talking to somebody. Uh-huh. So um, I did just print off more of those, Megan, because I was like, I got to get back to some of those basics. Just so I, I found myself um, letting things slip through. Like, oh my gosh, it's in that third email that they need to have because it's kind of like the final details. Like, here's how I need to have to put up and kind of important reminders. So, yeah. Yeah. And you can always on this sheet too, you guys, there's different sections for um, call notes. So just standard making notes about your calls. If your demo recipe, if you've really panned out what your host, your host may have already co done this before. So it's kind of nice. They might say, you know what? I made that chocolate lava cake the last time I, I hosted a party and I really want that this time again. So there's sections on here that you can um, make notes on that. And then also just driving directions on how to get to their house. This thing basically has it all. You can write down when you've submitted your show. Um, I, I just find it so helpful and I really try and make that my, my, one of my first things that I do when somebody says that they, that they would like to host just so I can keep track of everything. Um, so then there's that. And then the next thing that I like to keep um, in my notebook, so basically there's five, five tabs, you guys. The next thing is um, future bookings. And I basically, in my notebook, I just have regular notebook paper. And I don't know if you can see the tabs on the top, but I mark each paper, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So somebody may say at the party, you know what, I'm really interested in, in hosting, but maybe not right now, and that was the summertime. Do you mind contacting me in the fall um, before Christmas and all of that? And, and so that's where I would go to my October tab, and I write down their name, and I just make a contact info part. So then that way I can remind myself that, hey, Katie said back in June that she wanted to host in October, and I just need to contact her then. So I make a future... Um, bookings tab just to kind of help me keep track of those people that maybe aren't able to host it you know within the next couple months but are interested further out um, the next tab is just customer care so you know I randomly have had a couple people um, not get their full shipment in or the lids didn't fit on their glass prep bowls or something like that I just have again um, sheets of paper in my customer care tab um, and you can do this on Evernote too, you guys. You can you can totally make this notebook work like this on Evernote. This is just my paper form. Um, but I basically just write down, you know, their information, when they contacted me, what was the result when I called headquarters. Um, and then if, if it does end up needing to be something that's shipped out, I just kind of keep track of their customer care, my conversations with them, making sure that they were satisfied. Um, and then when I also just called them back to make sure that everything went smooth sailing and they got their product um, from headquarters back and, and all of that. So I keep that all in that tab. And then the, the rest of it is kind of all of my printouts that I make just to put in my packets for the host. So the fridge reminder sheet, um, the wish list, I have the party planner. That's basically the rest of everything else in my host coaching. And then I have a recipes tab, um, and that just kind of helps me keep track of, and I put it in a sleeve, basically, so that way when I go to my parties, I can just pull it out of my notebook, and it's right there for them to use and follow along with that. So that's basically the five parts to my notebook. Does anybody have any questions about that? Okay, good. Okay, well, I have one. I have one. Yeah. I'm coming into five parts. I've got host coaching, future bookings, customer care, and recipes. What was the fifth? So, and then my fifth one is just basically putting all those worksheets through the back of it. So the wish list, um, keeping track of, it's basically all of my paperwork is what I put okay. into that. Okay. Um, the fridge sheet, I actually also keep um, product lists. I just keep them current. So that way if anybody at parties has questions about products that maybe aren't in the catalog, I keep track of that. Um, I also kind of keep 
I have a thing that I made about the top 20 questions about becoming um, a pamper chef consultant and product question like answers. So if I am doing a party and say I'm handing out like my tickets and nobody has any questions for me, I'll just say, all right, well, I actually have something and I'm going to pass it out and we can all read through it and answer these questions all together. Um, so, and that just kind of is a, a way of reaching out to people and making them still more aware, even though they're timid to ask questions at parties. So, you know, like how much does it cost to get started? And then that's when I go over like my consultant kit and things like that. So I just kind of keep everything in the back of this in laminated sleeves, like my cooking show tally that you give your hosts after they've had their party. These. Have you guys seen this? No. Okay. You can also get this on, in the business center on Pampered Chef. Um, it's just your cooking show tally. And it basically goes, it says your host name, um, the date of the party, the show number. Um, it's going to say like their current guest sales level, the next, and then the next. So when I leave a party, I basically say, hey, your show is ni at 900 and some dollars. Your next level is that $1,000 level. And it'll tell them about the different products that they get for each level. Um, and then it also, I'm trying to make sure you guys can see this. It'll also talk about um, how much free product they'll get, how much half, pri half price products they'll get. And then it also has the section where um, if anybody was interested at their party and bookings that you can write down that information for them. So that way they, you know, if they book a party and they go to their party, they're going to get that 50% off product because that person booked from their show. And I'll point out to that part, it's actually for bookings and outside orders because yeah, that's right. A lot of times, you know, have you ever gotten to a show you're talking about, it's like, Oh, my friend so-and-so can't come now or, your last minute cancellation. So I always like to write those and I've even pulled that little sheet out or even um, pulled out because I do have a folder for each of my hosts. So I'll mm -hmm. stick that tally sheet in my folder. And um, if I've forgotten it or if I don't, just don't have time to pull out the tally sheet, there have been times that I've actually just written the names down on her folder um, because she'll say, oh, so-and-so can't come now. Or, or sometimes you know, you're setting up and they're like, oh, you know what? I have like, you know, Chris wants a book, and Susan wants a book, and Trisha wants a book, and you're like, okay, well, if we don't write those down, I am not going to remember at the end after I'm done setting up. So um, I even handed her my folder and said, hey, jot down those names on here so we make sure we remember them. Because, um, and I will say, when you're getting the information from the host for these names, um, Many times those can be future bookings, the outside orders, because they weren't able to come. So you can call them, take them from their order, and then say, you know what, since you weren't able to come to Megan's party, you know what we should do is just get a party together for you, you know, a day that works for you, and then you can see some of the things that are newer, or we can do a fun recipe. So I love that tally sheet for that reason. Yeah, that's, I'm so glad that you mentioned that, Christy. You know, and honestly, like Christy was saying about writing everything down, I will say, I kind of make a cooking show tally for me. So that way I can take that from the party. Um, and then I also give one to them. So when I'm filling that out, I am filling one out for me. It might not be as full written as what you would give the host, but it's something that I can take home and remind myself about that, the outside orders, the bookings, um, and also kind of their current level and next level. And then that is also just a good incentive, you guys, when you hand it to the host for them to make sure if they haven't gotten their 10 to 15 outside orders to really kick it in gear. Cause they'll have, I usually say, uh, we'll close the show in two days now, um, two to three days. And then that really kicks it in gear for them to say, I am almost, I'm $50 away from that next level. So the cooking show tally is really just a good, a good incentive for them to keep kind of after your party looking at those outside orders. Yeah. And I will say, let me just tell you guys, like that tally has been around for like 20 years, I bet. Um, a girl, Becky's, Becky's team, like your grandma and, you know, your upline Becky, who has been to Kansas City, she, she and her team created that because we oh, really? were using it, yes. And it used to be a two-ply, it used to be a two-ply mm -hmm. sheet that we would get from the office supply store because, um, you know, and then, and then now the company has it where we can print it off. So, and now with technology too, if you don't want to do two of them, fill one out completely and either have your host take a picture of it 
or I take a picture of it. So I have, co you know, I have a copy of what hers is. Um, but I, I like the host to have a physical one in her hand so she yeah. can. Yeah. So if you don't I, you can do two I've done that before and accidentally taken it home with me, like both of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I was like, oh no, but I took a picture of it. But I agree, like being able for them to have it as paper to take and have for themselves kind of helps them to. Um, and basically, too, when you hand them that piece of paper, especially after you've done a live party, that's a great opportunity for you to even talk about if they're interested in becoming a consultant again, just kind of brushing up on that. And then um, I always flip over the catalog that I have sent to them and just say, now this is what we're talking about, too. So this is a good guide for you to see on the back of that catalog or inside the catalog um, kind of what your levels are for what you're going to get in free product and half price items and, and such. Um, and then you can kind of start going through that wish list that I put in that packet. And if you haven't already, start writing down the things that you love the most. Did you really like the, the Dutch oven rock crock? Or maybe you wanted the grill stone, you know, more. So just kind of encouraging them to start putting that process along. Because um, sometimes the host will drag their feet a little bit, too, just about getting their things in. And I always just want to remind them that you've invited these people. And once they have left your house, they're going to be really excited about getting their products. Um, and we don't want to hang them up too, too much on getting things shipped too. So I just always encourage them, you know, two to three days and we're going to close it just so that way we can have that courtesy to the guests that came to your house to get their products shipped to them as quickly as possible. Does anybody have any questions? That's basically, basically it. Hey, Megan. Yeah. Sorry, my camera's not working. Um, and I joined late, but did do you go over kit credit? Yes. Okay. Um, and you know, you guys, that's, I was saying earlier too, you can, in the business center, this kit credit coupon, this is what I put in. So it just shows the three kits and then it'll say that, you know, depending on your qualifying party, if you'll have $25 or 50 and basically when you check them out on their party, um, the show cart, you can add one of those options. Does everybody know how to do that? How to add the kit credit? If somebody were to say, hey, I want to become a consultant, does everybody know how to add that kit credit? No. Okay. Let me well, show you. Well, she's pulling it up. Um, those, those coupons that she just showed you, they're three to a page on yes. the corner. So, and then the show tally is two to a page. So when you print them off, you can just cut them and, you know. <clears throat> Yeah, and I just put them on standard paper. I, um, yeah, I just cut them, and I just put them on standard paper. So say Ashley had, you know, this, this great party, a $1,000 party. Um, it'll you show, show, I think you have to open one of your shows that has sales on it. Will I have, oh, yeah, I will, won't I? Here, okay, let me go back. Does it show? I don't know that it'll, well, it won't be highlighted. Maybe it'll You're show. right. They probably have to put in their suit. Let me go to... Actually, I'll do the one that just signed. Let me see here. If you close, you want to do one that's not closed, though. Do you have one of the sales that don't have that aren't closed yet? You close fast. No, I don't. Do you have one, Christy, on your page? I don't have anybody that's not closed right now. Yeah, you want me to, sh you want me to share mine? You have to stop yes. sharing yours, and then I will. Christy, you yeah. might want to show where you can add those half price items on the back of the catalog as well. Cause I'll yes. And you know what? And that actually is a good, um, I was even, here's the thing we have to realize is that we, some things are old hat to us, even those of you that are newer consultants, but it's not with our host. They, they don't know <laughs> because I, um, let's see. Even the host dashboard, I've had so many questions lately on how to even access that. Even though you're sending out the email and it has all the information on how to get there. Yeah. Um, my, first, my first phone call to my host, I always make sure that they understand and don't have any questions on how to, to log on to even see like who has ordered or how much product they've earned. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I, have a, I have a really nice picture. Remind me, and I'll put it on our um, team page that I just – I had seen it in the past. But I just recently saw it again. Somebody shared it, and it's good. Okay, so this is Tish. So she's um, 
And, uh, is she, okay. Oh, she's already building her. Look at her. Okay, let me make sure this is. Yeah, this is the host. So she's already. She's obviously using it. So she's putting in some things that she likes, um, <clears throat> which is kind of cool. Okay, she didn't do this. This wasn't like this last night because I was looking. Um, okay, so hopefully it'll show up here. Okay, so um, right here, you see where um, she's earned $240 in free. Um, but see where it's highlighted right here? Um, underneath her free product value. Um, We'd love to have you on the team. Check out the kit credit option. So when you click on that, it gives you the option of the 25 or the 50, and you just add it to the cart. Now, obviously, she's already, I mean, I'm not going to add it to the cart because she's going to be like, what? Um, so this is, this is the happy dance right here. When I was saying your host can actually go on and enter their order, this host has entered her order because <clears throat> I can't tell you how many times I've sat with a host and she's I'm into the catalog and you're like, oh my gosh, we're crying out loud. How about I let you go and you call me back when you're ready? You know? So this make this, I'm doing the happy dance right here. So I'm just going to have to really just touch base with her and make sure she's got it. Now, what Joellen said, this is the starter kit, the Stoneware starter kit, which is one of the um, half price combinations here. And <clears throat> it's not, it, it's also a, a little link. Um, and see, since she already has, has them on here, it's not showing up. But basically, it's going to be a link like this, like where it says kit credit options. But there will be a link underneath the half price options that says half price combinations. And so if there's any of those half price combinations that they want from the back of the catalog, you click that little link that's, that would be right here. <laughs> and that's how she got this starter set on there. Uh, you can take it off and put it back on to show them if you want. Oh, I could. Yeah, let me do that. Okay. I, I am so, this is a friend of mine. I am so impressed with her. I'm calling her when we get off the phone. Oh, I'm impressed that she found that starter kit. I, I, yeah, I can never. My never. Kit, but the half price combination right here. You'll see she, she has one half price combination. So it says right here, choose from these combinations. Now, I will say, I was talking to Melody. <clears throat> She's a new consultant, and she was getting a party turned in. And um, <clears throat> she was, she didn't realize the half price items are anything in the entire catalog. She was thinking like of the half price items, she had to pick both of them from the combination. So that's something um, that we need to make sure our hosts are aware of too. So then that brings up that, that um, combination. So thanks, Joellen. Um, Eldana, I think you had the question too about the tabs in my booklet. You'd asked me about the tabs. There were two that I was also going to mention. I keep a Google Drive um, on two tabs. If you wanted to, there's two different tabs that you could still put in that notebook, which is active leads and then recruiting leads. Um, I always kind of type that up on my Google Documents just or do Google Drive just so I can make notes if, when I've called them and such. But in your, in your host coaching notebook, if you wanted to, you could make that part of your tabs as well. So just active leads, recruiting leads. Good. I would. I have mine just kind of written on a piece of paper, stuck out a bulletin board. It's there, but not very organized. Yeah, and you know what, you guys? Honestly, all I did was go to Target into the section. These were in the dollar section one day, and, and there was five of them. And that's all I do is, and I just mark them and I just put them in those tabs. And it's kind of helped me keep really organized, and it was really cheap, which I was excited about. Um, and then there was one more thing. Oh. Uh, making your own labels. Um, you can basically go onto um, the business center, and if you search mini catalog template label, the website will allow you to enter in all your information, and then you can just print everything off from there. Okay, so start us over again. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna do what you tell me to do. Okay, so you go to oh, the on. business center, or you can probably just even search it if you wanted. Yeah. Okay, so tell us what to search. Label? Mini catalog template label. And then whenever they do this, make sure you have resources because sometimes they'll have something else. Right here. Mini yep. catalog application label? Yes. I think when I searched it was template label, but we'll see if this pulls it up. I don't know. That's not. Oh. Nope. Mini catalog template label. Oh, I don't think I put template in there. Um, 
I'm trying to see how, you know, how. Print, printable labels. Maybe. Oh, right here. Oh, this is this, uh, this is that size. So, um, Oh, that's, it's not pulling it in. Go to mini catalog tab. Okay, where? Over oh, right here. Oh, Joe Ellen. There you go. Okay. We can't see you, but. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's on my phone. Oh, maybe that's not it. So, and I, you guys, when I also at Target or Walmart, if you didn't want to buy the expensive um, Avery or whatever that brand is, I just use the up and up and it's way cheaper and it's just as good because I've printed them on both. And Office Depot, there, um, we have Office Depot discount cards and when you buy Office Depot brand, you get, I mean, you get them so cheap because it's, oh, good. Yeah. so when you buy the Home Depot or Office Depot, or not Home Depot, that's Office Depot. <laughs> um, yeah. Home Depot does not sell labels, I don't think, and we don't have a discount card. Um, okay, this is weird. Okay, let me type in exactly what you said. Mini catalog. You said Mini template. catalog template label. That's what they said on that audio thing that I, the host coaching audio that I did this week. Mini. That's the one that's the invitation label. What it, what it was the printable label, though, that we clicked on, wasn't it, Christy? Yeah, we clicked on, and then I then we, well. And then we went to mini catalog. Yeah, but there's not a link for you. Yeah. That, it just said on that thing, uh, the audio about host coaching, it said search mini catalog template label is what she said. So where did you get your labels from? You didn't print your labels that you showed us on here? Hi. No, no, because I didn't know about that. I just listened to that audio, the host coaching one on that you guys sent. Yeah, I think I think what the host coaching label was is um, is this is this one the invite labels where it basically has all the information for the show. This is what they were talking about on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't the little labels like the return labels because this is one like um, okay. So here's the B. Okay. So these labels that you see on the screen would fit right here. So oh. basically, it's a way that you can put all the information for the show and then your consultant numbers on there. And when you print that out, you put it on here and then your host can send this out. Well, she okay. said that on the thing right that she here. put her picture on it though. When I was listening to it, she said, and you can, it'll let you, um, she said she put her picture on it. Well, Lisa, she does her own labels. She creates her own labels using Publisher. Oh, uh, okay. She creates her own using Publisher that she can put her, her face, that she can personalize it. Gotcha. But, and the one that she's talking about, it looks like, I think it looks like, because she shared those. I'm in, a, I'm in a group with her, and she shared that with, with us, so I can try to find it and share it on our page if somebody wants to use that template that she has. I think it's, I think it's Publisher. Or huh. something. It's not like a. It's not word. It's not like something that everybody has. Well, so. I was when I was listening. I'm like, that would be really interesting to see hers because um, we. I couldn't see what she'd made, but she said she put her picture on it, which mine just has like the Pampered Chef um, logo and then just my name and consultant number and all that, which and I've if, shared. With if you wanted to do the label or your picture, like instead where that where that um, logo is, you could just upload your picture. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I can totally share that with everybody too, the ones that I made. I tried to do that with Amanda though, and for some reason, um, when she tried to edit it, it didn't come out it didn't come out right for her. I think she ended up having to start from scratch and make her own too. Is for your some reason, it it Word or Google Doc? What was yours made with? Um, yeah, mine would have been a Google Doc. And I think I know Sharon was messaging me too, and she's kind of an expert on Google Doc and getting one, but I I've had that before where, it, like, yeah, when you've shared it or somebody tries to use it or update it, it, it the editing throws off. So I don't know if it throws off based on yeah. your, like, how your computer is set up. 
or how that works? Those labels were a big pain to make. I will say that it took, it was a labor of love, but I'm glad I have them just perfect now. Cause I really, you really had to kind of tweak them a little bit to make them fit onto the. Here's what mine looks like. It didn't have any picture. It's just like my name. It's just oh yeah. Like, and it's a word document. So I don't, I guess thing is like Megan, you got yours done and it's perfect and she can share them. And if you guys are trying to get it done and, and yours isn't coming up nice like hers, don't spend a ton of time on it because people aren't going to buy more if you have like a picture on your label. Yeah. You know, so. And once you get it perfect, you won't have to worry about it anymore. It just took yeah. yeah. Save one it. time. Yeah. Yeah. So. I do. I have a question and it might be for this group or, or later. Um, the party is set up to email people. And I want to know how to text them as well because on the party page when you go to it you set up the party it gives you the options to do the email reminder before and the thank yous after I uh -huh. would like to be able to convert that directly to text I I've never done that that way I always send it in email Christy do you know how to send that in a text in what in a text so she, Eldana, her question is, um, when you go to your show page and you go to email your host, how do you get that information to just text to them versus email? It's, it's, it's email your host. It's not a text yeah. thing. I, I've never done it that way. I mean, I guess because if you're a lot of information, that's a, yeah. a lot of information to text to your host. Why wouldn't you want to email them, Eldana? Because the young people I'm working with don't have their friends um, emails, but they have their tech, they have their phone numbers. So, so, if you I wanted, so you're talking about creating a guest list using text. Right. And, but on the emails, it says, send your guest an email reminder, send your guest a thank you for attending, you know, and, and I guess these, these gals don't do emails. They do text only. Well, that's where the red stamp is going to come in handy. Okay. Where you have it. And you know what, here's the thing too, our, our, um, our home office and our marketing department is so fantastic. To be honest, you don't even, like Eldana, you don't have to learn Red Stamp if you don't want to. You can go in and save some of these beautiful pictures, mm -hmm. um, like from our marketing department, the marketing and imagery department. Where is that? And I, I will say I almost... I do red stamp, but I'm thinking about switching to just a picture with wording that they could forward on because yep. you can't click on their party link through red stamp. Right. So I think even just sending out one picture and you can just save one picture and send it out like as a general text, no matter what kind of party you do. Exactly. And just change the information. So I, I That's think. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Yeah, and here's the thing too. You could send a, you could send like this picture, you know, with the the free the free guest special picture. Um, you know, you could send this picture. I mean, you could. I, um, the one I have been doing lately is the real pretty. This well, not that one because it's the Christmas crop. Um, but it's the one that's kind of like that. It's it's got the new inter like something like this. Like I just send like this. I save that picture to my phone. And then I'll just send it in exactly like what Joellen says, because then, then people can just click on the link and order. And this, uh -huh. this is the Eldana. one, post holiday. Yeah. Yes. Um, Eldana, I would get on Pampered Chef, um, the, get on your phone and go to the Pampered Chef website. Um, and then you can save it to your phone a lot easier. So okay, access this, um, you know, Log into the Pampered Chef website on your phone, and then you should have the option to save to phone. And you know what, Eldana, I will upload this to our team page. It might even be easier um, to go to Facebook to our team page, and then you can just save that image from our team page. Because um, I had forgotten what Joellen just said is the key that when I, it's also nice because if I have eight parties in a month or 10 parties in a month, I can just have that one picture that I'm sending to them and text is going to be the information. And what I've done too is I've told my host, the next text that you get from me is one you can just forward to your friends. So the next text I send her has nothing like, hi, Megan, or, you know, anything like that. I think my signature off. It's just the picture, her show information, um, you know, and you can forward it on. 
Okay, thank you. I, okay. I also I also had a party. It was it was a fundraiser, and I only had email addresses, and I was trying to upload recipes, but I couldn't get them. I I couldn't. I, I had too many characters, so it was like okay. So I I um I wasn't able to do that. <laughs> you remember that website I told you to go to? The what is it? Mini. Tell me again. Tiny dot cc. Tiny dot. I would say mini. Okay. That's a lifesaver. Okay. Tiny dot cc. Okay. Joellen, do you mind explaining yeah. the tiny dot cc just one more time? Yes. So, um, say you're using the s'mores cake recipe for your show and you want to send that to your guests the following day. So I would go to my personal website, find the s'mores cake recipe and take that URL and go to tiny.cc. That will change the total, that big URL and you can change it to whatever. So you could put in Megan's s'mores cake. And then you have tiny.cc slash Megan s'mores cake. And um, then I copy that. I have a full documented Evernote of that. And I've posted, posted the video of how I send emails on the Facebook page. But um, so then I just copy the. Well, because I think on that video, you said that you're going to show your Evernote. So people can, I did. It's in the comments. So here's the thing with that, though. Like, Aldana, when you use Joellen's, you're going to want to tweak it because Joellen's is going to go to her website. Right. Okay. So, and so then I just um, email that, you know, tiny.cc slash Joellen s'mores cake. And then that will take them directly to my website for them to get, you know, they can click on the link and it'll take them to my website um, to get the recipe. And then they might do a little shopping. It's genius. And then you're, having, you're not sending them a document that, you know, you're sending them to your website. It's alive, it saves you time. Yes. So, so kind of cool to I, get that those links set up, but once you have them done, I mean, it's great customer service so fast. Yeah. So I think we're officially going to move into the question and answers part, wouldn't you say, guys? Since we're on this, I'm just going to start making a parking lot of kind of what we're talking about to make notes. Um, so then that way we can go back and make sure that we're reposting some of these questions with their answers. Hey, Christy, have you set up a um, event for our December meeting? Nope, but that is on my list here today. Awesome. I'm so excited for I that. Am too. I am too. And it's going to be at my house, so I will send that out today <coughs> and get that for <coughs> Excuse me. Perfect. Um, a question that I've been getting a lot of from new consultants is, how to find the use and care for products. You know, how, what's, what's the warranty? How do I find that? Um, I don't know, do you guys have a good way that you? The app is the best way because yeah. um, I just feel like you can get, um, if, you, if you do the app on your phone, it's, mm -hmm. just, it's not as um, full as the website. Um, so that's, that's, I try to encourage new consultants. The app is your friend because you can get, and I can, um, I'm signing on now. Um, obviously you can search here like for a particular product. So if you wanted to do like the manual food processor. And then right here, it's going to take you, oh, Right here, so these little things, products, recipes, resources, videos, I'm gonna go right here to products. My kids are playing PS4, it's probably a problem. Okay, so you can view it. This is actually where everybody can view it, but I think everybody has access to it as well. We use the care. Right here, use and care. So if you just look up a product on the website, you can find the use and care. Oh my gosh, it's so big. Um, but the, I think the app is almost even easier because if you're sitting out and about, you know, you, you can pull up the app a little easier on the phone and you can get the same information. But does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Also the catalog too. 
Oh, the catalog link, you know what, I, I need to find uh, I mean, just pull out a catalog and look through. <laughs> oh, pull out a catalog. They have a little circle next to each, um, right next to the price. It'll say like three with a circle around it or um, LTW, lifetime warranty, uh, something like that. So that's a good place too for right. new consultants to see. Right. And the catalog doesn't have like necessarily the, you know, is it just what you say? Some of them does. Some of the products do, but um, yeah. So I, I feel like it, if everybody can just get comfortable with all of the app shows, I guess you can't really see that. Um, there. Um, but when you click on browse products down here, and Joel, you're the one that you're the one that told me this. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, that's on the app. Okay. Um, but it is, I mean, it's great because I mean, even like dining and entertaining, you know, what is this, this slate made out of? I mean, you have all the information. There's inf okay, let me see. I don't think you can see. Okay, there. Jennifer, Jennifer, have you found this app yet on your phone? Here, right? Yes, here. I'm using it. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Here, so it'll tell you like, it, so this is a set. So you think here, it has the different links to which item in the set, you know, you want to get the information about. And then it actually has a tab. This is good um, for all of us because, I mean, these new products are brand new to all of us October 1st, you know. So um, there's even a tab here that says related products. It was awesome. And Tish, that show I just pulled up for you guys, that was a, um, there was a Stella and Dot Girl there, and I was there. <laughs> I mean, she did well too, but I mean, um, my host said, you know, my friends were telling me they were so, they were so glad that you were here too. I know you don't usually do this, she said, but I'm, they were glad you were here too because they didn't need jewelry, but they, they wanted to be a bridge So, um, and I tell you what, we used the, this um, new um, set. It looked gorgeous. I'll just post some pictures. I told, look at your little girl. Oh my gosh, she's so excited. Yeah, Jennifer, she's so sweet. Oh, she's so cute. Um, she won't stay quiet. Sorry. They, they were, oh my just, God. Um, I mean, they were comments from everybody. It ranges from like my host mom and mother-in-law down to like my host teenage daughter, you know, like how pretty everything looked. And basically she picked up some sausages and some cheese and some grapes. Um, and, and I had, I did do the brick of cream cheese or the raspberry habanero on the little slate. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that is so easy. I made a lava cake and whipped cream, and it was like eleven dollars show. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. It was crazy. So um, I don't know. I feel like if we can um, and have access, and I did pull this up a couple times because they were asking numbers, and it was easier for me to search this than it was for me to search the catalog to find out what item numbers. So. Jennifer, when we were talking about that app. Um, that's when I said eventually you don't have to have it, but that card reader that we mm -hmm. use when you're checking people out on shows, that's the app that when you're checking people out that you can use that reader with. Yeah. Which is not, it's so nice and it's so fast. Yeah. Although I will say when people have had chips and I've noticed it's more with Bank of America clients, um, that I've been having to call them and most of the time they say, Oh, it's, I'm sorry. I'm with bank of America. And it's because you scanned it versus using the chip. Has anybody else had that yet? Where it throws them like a security thing and it won't let you submit their card unless you retype it in. You know, what? Yes, I, the other, a lot to me. And the other night I wasn't, it wasn't even reading mine in and I hadn't used my reader in a while, but because I was doing this app, I knew it was gonna be kind of open house style. I wanted it to be quicker. Uh, yeah. And I couldn't get it. It wasn't importing. I told him, I said, no, I'm doing this three times, but it's not charging it. I just yeah. trying to get it to read. Yeah. yeah. I have noticed it's more with the Bank of America, the chips. So I don't know. Have you guys still been using the card reader? Even, I mean, I don't know. I've, I just feel like I've started noticing a little bit more hiccups with it, but it is so much faster when it works. Like I said, I hadn't used it in a while until Thursday, and then it wasn't working at all on Thursday. But I can, um, I'll message the tech team. Um, to kind of ask if their card, if the chip affects the card reader. Okay, I'm writing that. So you, only, you only get the error, Megan, when you go to submit the party? Yes. Uh-huh. So you don't know that it didn't work when you're originally scanning it. Good. So and it's only when you go to submit it, it'll say, oh, no, you can't, you know, your authorization failed. And it's basically because it was the chip 
Um, and the only reason why I figured that out was because one of the girls, um, through my party, she actually has like some financial advising, like security, something on her card that they pay extra for. Mm -hmm. And so when she called to ask why, um, it wasn't processing, they immediately said it was because your card was scanned without using the chip. Mm -hmm. so that's the only reason why I knew that that had happened. And that's interesting too because the card reader is not running it it's just pulling it in it's just pulling the information in yeah mm, okay I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask the, the, ask about the it. yeah because I don't know and that's just what she was telling me but it did end up I mean we, I really ended up just typing it in and it's it went immediately through after she had talked to them so it was a little bit weird hey Christy yes Hey, it's Melody and Hey, Melody. I was wondering hey. who Samsung was that joined us <laughs> Um, I was listening to this about the chip reader. Mm -hmm. Considering we own a credit card processing company, I might yes. be able to help you with this question. Yes. You are going to go more and more to seeing all cards go to chips. Yes. It's EMV, and it's more secure. And what it does when you swipe a card, you are reading all of their banking information. Right. All address, everything, all their well, what's happened now is Visa, MasterCard, and Discover has decided that they will no longer pay when we have um, people that make car fake cards and go out and charge. Gotcha. They're going to start charging the merchant, which would be you or whoever's selling. They will charge that merchant a fee um, and ping you. And after you get so many pings, and you're not going to be able to take accept cards any longer. And so what you what most people are doing, I know like Square is going to it, um, and probably Pampered Chef will eventually, is actually having the mobile pay, where it's on their phone and they can just lay it up there, or they will have a cheap a chip reader device that still is wireless that will go to your phone. And it will solve that problem because I'm a Bank of America client and my card, it will not allow me to swipe if there is availability of EMV. Right. Well, you know, I, that's great information, Melody. And the thing that makes ours different and unique than anything else is that our, our scanner is just inputting the numbers. It's not running the card. Like the square actually runs the card. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you're uh, reading the information off of information. Right, right. And then it sends it somewhere else. So it's, it's, yeah. So that'll be interesting. So I'll, I'll, I'll message our tech team just to say, like, should we stop doing this? Because we don't want to get blacklisted or whatever. You know, we don't want to get not yeah. people can't use our card. Because I like it when people use their card. Because now I'm going to you know. So. Well, and it's only happened a couple times recently in the last couple of weeks. I hadn't noticed it until then. So maybe if we find it, a, I put it's it on our marketing information, we can figure out the holidays too, and Black Friday, and, and you know yeah. I'm sure that I'm sure security's kind but of picking up. EMV is going into effect nationwide. It's it was in effect, you know, in October of last year, and now they're really reinforcing it that everyone goes to EMV and chip card readers and so you're going to see it get a little bit more difficult good to know yeah thank you okay. to back up what she says because i'm in the credit card industry too um merchants point of sale systems have started taking where they will require the chip and those cards that don't have chips the point of sale systems won't recognize so eventually Pampered Chef is going to have to take that on for federal requirements. And our system will not recognize cards without chips, but we don't have chip readers. So there will have to be some type of update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like as most of the time, most consultants, most consultants aren't swiping or, or, or inserting a card. Most consultants are just inputting their card number. You're not going to be able to do that. Manual keen is accepted with chipped cards. Yeah. Scanning is not. And right. so, right. Um, you know, my biggest client is Best Buy. Yeah. We, our cards don't have chips because they're considered a store charge. Uh, so the only way that that store can swipe our swipeable cards is they actually have to key it as if the card is not there. 
Gotcha. So that is the most secure way. If we get one that has a chip, honestly, you should be hand keying it and not swiping those with a chip. So that's good to know too. It's really good to know. That's good to know. Because, because even with the card readers, that's great um, information. If it has a chip, just don't use the card reader. No, ma'am. Yeah. But the no, manual entering, and that, I mean, it is a little, it, it especially, I will say, I'd rather enter it on my phone than on my iPad because the iPad's a pain to enter card numbers, I feel like. You know, sometimes the keypads are, are different, but I'm going to go ahead. Um, anybody else have questions? I can stop the recording. We can stop and answer questions if we do, but it is after 1030. It's like 10. Yeah. Um, but great job, Megan. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you guys for hopping on. I really appreciate it. And, um, we will upload some things to the team page too. Um,